Hello there and welcome back. It's Jennifer McGuire. Thank you for visiting once again. So today I'm sharing with you some really fun and easy ways to use your embossing folders creatively to create unique backgrounds. Now I've done many embossing folder techniques in the past and I will link to a playlist here. But today's techniques are super simple and use basic inks in most cases. Basically, you're either applying ink to your embossing folder or to the embossed surface to really make that texture pop. I have loads of examples for you because I feel like the best way to demonstrate how effective a technique is, is to show lots of examples. It also shows that it will work with probably some of the embossing folders and inks you already have on hand. So I will first go through doing lots of techniques and then we will turn them all into cards. And I have some suggestions on how to make a bunch of cards at once. Now in most of my previous videos on how to use embossing folders creatively, I start with white cardstock and add ink to it. Well today I'm starting with colored cardstock and adding ink to it. So I have some beautiful color selections here. These happen to be all new from Spellbinders. They have a new cardstock collection line. Doesn't matter what brand you use as long as it's heavyweight. Embossing folders are most effective on heavyweight cardstocks because you pick up a lot more detail from the folder. I'm also using lots of embossing folders today from Altenew. These are all 3D embossing folders, which means, means there's not just raised and lowered areas, but a smooth transition between the two, which gives a really cool 3D effect. However, keep in mind these techniques can be done with regular embossing folders too. I am often asked if I mist or spray my cardstock with water before using an embossing folder. I usually do not. However, if I do want to add some moisture to the cardstock before using a folder, I will take a slightly damp cloth and wipe it on both sides of the cardstock. That way you have more of an even amount of moisture on both sides. When you spray it, it's kind of hit or miss if you're really contacting the parts of the cardstock that will be stretched the most. So if you're finding you get a little tearing or rough edges with your particular cardstock, your particular machine, and whatever embossing folder you're using, try wiping both sides lightly with a damp cloth. Not too much water, just a little bit. And look at this beautiful result that you get the, from this Altenew embossing folder. That's one of the fun things about 3D embossing folders is the designs are so dynamic. It's really fun to see what you can create from plain cardstock in an inexpensive embossing folder. So on each of these today, I am wiping both sides of the cardstock with a light amount of water, tiny, tiny bit, just to make sure I don't tear any of the paper. I did test it without and none of the paper tore, but just in case, or if you just want to be careful. I also do think if you do uh, put a little bit of moisture on both sides of the cardstock, you will get a little bit more detail out of your embossing folder, but not so much that I usually take the time to do it. But for today's examples, I decided to. So I'm going through a few different new all to new embossing folders here. All of them I'm running through my Spellbinders Platinum. Embossing folders will work with whatever die cut machine you have. But keep in mind, every die cut machine has a different sandwich and every embossing folder has a different thickness, so it'll need a different sandwich. You'll just have to test it out. With these particular folders, I just use the platform, my cardstock in the embossing folder, and then a clear cutting plate on top. This particular embossing folder here, the Garden Harmony, is definitely my favorite, and you'll see a lot of close-ups of this after we do some inking. All of the different embossing folders that I use today are very different. Some have a lot of open space, some have tight detail, but I wanted to show a lot of examples to show you that these techniques work with a bunch of different types of embossing folders. Okay, let's do some of the inking techniques that I wanted to share with you today. We'll start with very simple and then we'll step it up a bit. The first and easiest way to ink up an embossing folder background is to rub a white pigment ink over it. Now this is super easy, but very effective. Any white pigment ink will work for you. I'm using this one from Ink on 3 because it's new and nice bright white because it's good and juicy. But any white pigment ink will work. I'm lightly rubbing it over the raised areas. So I'm trying to keep my ink pad over the raised areas only. 
You can see on the edge, there are areas where there is no raised embossing. So I'm trying to avoid those. So what's happening is the parts of the background that stand up the most, that have the most texture to them, will grab a hold of some of that white ink. Then the lower areas won't. And look at that beautiful look that you get. Super fast, super simple, and it works with any color cardstock. I actually like it best on a lighter color cardstock, but if you want more impact, you can go with a darker color cardstock. Let's do a couple more examples where I apply the white pigment ink only to the raised areas. Notice I'm going back and forth, and if I do go in a circular motion, I make sure to go in both directions. That way I can be sure to catch all of the raised areas. And don't press too hard or you will ruin the effect. So just a light swipe of the ink. Now this one, it looks really cool on, even though it's a dark cardstock background, that white gives a nice contrast, which allows that pattern to stand out even more. Now I will be doing a lot of backgrounds here. While I have my die cut machine out and my embossing folders, I just like to do a bunch of backgrounds at once. I will turn them into all into cards today. However, keep in mind, you can do a lot of embossing folder backgrounds and just have them ready to go when you want to and add whatever ink you want when it's time to make a card. This particular yellow one, by the way, that large flower looks beautiful with that white ink applied to it. Super simple technique, but very effective. By the way, when I'm done with my background, I like to heat set it just to make sure the ink doesn't smear. Now with this example, I'm gonna step it up a bit. So I'm applying the white pigment ink as before, but this time, instead of letting it dry, I thought I would add some pigment powder on top so the areas where you see the white ink, it'll have some shine to it. This is Ranger Perfect Pearls, which is a type of pigment powder. I'm using the white color, and I'm just brushing it over my background. Anywhere where I applied that white pigment ink, the powder will hold on to. So I'll apply this pretty generously, wipe off the excess, and then once I'm all done, I will spray this with a fixative. You don't have to, you could just mist it with a bit of water and that'll help it stay, but I just use a fixative to be careful. So in this case, our raised areas have a little bit of white to it and a bit of shine. So it's nice to add that little bit of sparkle too. Keep in mind, there are lots of colors of Perfect Pearls. There are some that even look different colors depending on how you tilt them. You could use some of those really cool colors, but in this case, I'm just using the basic white to offer a little bit of shine on top of the white pigment ink that we've applied. Doing the same thing here again, this time on a very light color cardstock. This gives a very subtle background that would be perfect for either a wedding or anniversary card. And again, I will turn these into cards later in the video. I apologize because it's kind of hard to see those pigment powders on the surface, but it does offer some shine. Another way to apply pigment powders is instead of using white pigment ink, you can use Versamark ink. Versamark ink is just a clear sticky ink and here I'm just rubbing it gently over the raised areas of this background that I've done an embossing folder on. It just kind of darkens the areas where I've rubbed that ink. Now I'm applying the same Perfect Pearl. By using the Versamark first, the shine won't be as vivid because there's not white ink under it. It's just a nice alternative and this will really make the sparkle show because we're using a dark cardstock and then we just put the sparkle on the raised areas and look at that. It's beautiful, it almost creates somewhat of a metallic look to it that is really easy to achieve and a great way to step up your embossing folder backgrounds. Here's another idea for you. This time, I'm using a different specialty ink. This is Enchanted Gold ink from Altenew. This gives like a gold shimmer when you use it. Now, I'm just going to use it by rubbing it over my embossing folder background. I will say that my ink pad is a little dry. I need to get a re-anchor, but you can still see the effect of this subtle shimmer gold on all the raised areas on the background. So if you have any metallic ink pads or specialty ink pads, try those over the raised areas of an embossing folder background. It really is quite effective. 
Okay, let's change gears, and this time we're applying the ink into the embossing folder before we run the cardstock through it. Now I've done a technique video in the past, a couple of them in fact, where I've showed how to apply different colors of ink into the embossing folder, and then it transfers the ink onto your cardstock when you run it through your die cut machine. Well today, I'm instead of doing colored inks, I'm doing white pigment ink. The best way to apply white pigment ink smoothly into your embossing folder is with a brayer. I like the Tim Holtz brayer. It is the right uh, firmness to it to evenly apply ink into your embossing folder. So you can do either side of the embossing folder. Definitely try both sides. Here I'm applying it to the side of the embossing folder where the background is raised. So I'm applying a good amount of white pigment ink. I just keep going back to my pad and rolling the, the brayer through it. Once I have a good even amount, I put my cardstock in and I run it through my die cut machine as we did before. Now this time I just ran it through like I showed you before, didn't use a metal shim. And what I found is that the white ink transferred close to the raised areas of the embossing folder, but not over the entire background. I didn't have enough pressure. Now I think this is really cool looking. You can see how it creates kind of a white outline, but I want to transfer all of that white ink to the background. So I'm re-inking up my folder. I didn't wipe that excess ink off, no reason to let it go to waste, but I'm putting more ink onto it. Then I can put in another piece of cardstock, but this time when I put it through my die cut machine, I put a metal shim under the embossing folder. This will give it a little more pressure. You could use two pieces of cardstock if you prefer or if you don't have a metal shim, but I found the metal shim worked great. I went back and forth through my machine and watched this. All of that white ink transferred into the background and it just gives the coolest effect. So you can see the leaves and all the raised areas are the true green and the background has that white look to it. It is just beautiful in real life. Let's do a few more examples of this. I'm really impressed on how well the white ink transfers into the embossing folder with the brayer. I'm able to get really good coverage and then therefore transfer it to my cardstock. Once again, I'm using that metal shim. I go one way and then I go the other way. I think it just adds more pressure, I don't know, but it definitely works. And once I take it out, you can see that white ink applied to the background. It's even more effective or noticeable with this darker color of cardstock. Now you could leave this as is, but I wanted to show you how to step it up. One thing you can do is now apply Versamark ink over the raised areas. The Versamark ink will just make it a little bit darker. It's like a watermark. So your raised areas will be a little bit darker. Then the areas in between will be the true cardstock color. Then the background will be the white. So it's fun to get all these different things going on with that one piece of colored cardstock. You could even put sparkle embossing powder on this if you wanted to, or you could add the uh, perfect pearls as I did before. All right, so I have another embossing folder here. I wanted to test this one out since there's a lot of open space in the background. After doing it once, you can see the results are pretty good, but I wanted them to be even better. So I re-inked my embossing folder. You don't need to add much more ink each time. Then I lined up my paper with the raised area on the other side of the folder. It kind of pops right into place. Then I closed the embossing folder, went back through the die cut machine again, and look at the coverage we got. So with large background areas like this, you might have to run through twice, but the results will be great. And on this one, I decided to add the Versamark to the raised areas just to kind of build up the contrast between the raised and the background. So as you can see, the techniques I share today really will work with any embossing folder. I also found that these techniques with white pigment ink or Versamark ink work with any colors of cardstock. So say you have a surplus of a certain color, do a lot of embossing folder backgrounds like this. Here I did a really light cardstock. On this one, I even did a brown cardstock. This is a craft color, but it doesn't have all the little specks in the cardstock. It's just a brown cardstock. But when you put the white pigment ink on it, it looks really cool. In this one, I decided to step up even more and put some pigment powder in different areas in the background. So now it has some shine in some areas. You could cover it completely, but I kind of like having that variation across it. Really beautiful, even with a brown cardstock, which I normally don't use for techniques like this. 
Okay, so now we have a bunch of backgrounds, and I wanted to share with you the thought process that I went through on figuring out what card designs to do with these backgrounds. Basically, I tried six or seven designs, picked my favorite, and then I did more of those designs using the different backgrounds, and I'll walk you through the thinking with each. Let's start with this first one with the large oval opening. For this and many of my cards, I use the all to new fancy hello die, which I've used more than any die in a video. I really like this one. And I'm also using the all to new leaf cluster stamp set, which was a favorite of mine the previous year. Along with the stamp set, I have the coordinating die set. And this works great on many different background styles. I wanted to use one of the large leaf images, but I didn't want it to distract too much from my background. So I decided to do my stamping on the same color cardstock as my embossing folder background, which you'll see in a moment. It's this dark teal color. So I'm stamping the large leaf on there with Versamark ink and adding gold sparkle embossing powder. I'll then die cut it out. Because the trim on this die cut will match my background, it won't stand out as much. It'll be a little more subtle which is an advantage when you have a background you don't want to distract too much from. So here you can see the trim around the leaf matches the background. Okay, for a window on this card, I'm using the all new nesting oval dies, which I use a lot in this video. I like these dies because on the inside of the cutting edge is an embossed line. Now I didn't use the inside piece, I only used the frame. And I cut it from white cardstock that's slightly smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half. I then use this dotted embossing die on the front of that frame, just for some detail. I cut two additional oval frames that are slightly smaller, and I'm gluing that behind our main frame so that it has some dimension to it. You can skip this, but I like to build up the layers on my cards so they have lots of dimension. So I have two additional white frames behind our main frame that has the embossing detail on it. Now I'll glue this onto our background, which you can see I trimmed down a bit. Because I started with cardstock that was five and a half by five and a half, I will have leftover pieces from all of our backgrounds to use on a future card. So I'll probably do a card with some of the scraps and maybe share it over on Instagram, but I don't let any of those texture pieces go to waste. So now we have a nice frame for our inked textured background. I then added our gold glitter die cut kind of off to the side so it didn't cover up too much of the background and it hangs outside of our frame a bit. On top of that, I added our hello die cut. The hello is actually two die cuts thick that I glued together for dimension. And then I added a little sentiment strip underneath and some gold glitter gems around it. I added white cardstock to the inside so I had a nice spot to write my personal message. Here's a closer look at that inked background with all that texture. So this is one where I used my Brer with my white pigment ink inside of the embossing folder. After doing the embossing folder, I rubbed Versamark ink on the raised areas. It creates a beautiful background that really you don't need to add much else to. I kind of added a lot to it, but you could definitely keep it simple if you prefer. By the way, that little sentiment strip that says and warm hugs is from this Altenu Paint a Flower Rose Outline stamp set. I like that it has tiny little sentiments that you can add under main die cut sentiments. Okay, let's look at my next card design. In this case, I wanted more of the outside edge to show, a lot of the background. This time I used some alphabet dies. These are the Altenu Tall Alpha Lowercase dies. Use these before in a video. I'm arranging the word hello onto my sticky mat. That way I can be sure they're spaced just right and they are nice and straight. Once I have them all lined up here, I'll take a piece of tape and lay it across all of the letters and pick them all up at once. It's much easier to get the letters all assembled on a sticky mat, then bring them to my project instead of putting adhesive on the back of them and trying to arrange them on my card. Next, I created a little frame for the background that has vellum in the center. I'll show you the dies that I use for all these pieces in a moment. I am then adding right to the center a gold die cut. This is actually a layering die, and both of the layers are cut from gold. That way it had some texture to it, but it's just kind of like a gold embellishment at the center of your card. After that was dried, I put adhesive on the back of my hello letters, and I can lay this right across my card, and the tape will hold it in place until it's dry. 
Now I know I make a lot of hello and thanks cards and that's what most of my cards are today, but that's what I really need cards for right now as I'm sending them to blog readers and to nurses and teachers. So for me, thank you and, and uh, hello cards are my most used, but you could make this sentiment be anything you may need. Now, if you look close, you can see the gold that I applied with the gold ink pad to that textured background. And then the gold embellishment in the center really sets it off. Now that leaf, the layering leaf that I did in gold is from the Altenew Jumbo Garden Layering Dies, which I've used many times in videos. But this is the first time I did it with gold on gold. You can see all the different layering flowers inside. Now the gold cardstock I used happens to be one of my favorites. It's from Tim Holtz and it's actually craft cardstock with gold on it. So the back side of it is craft. In this pad, there is the gold and the silver and both have a little bit of texture to them, which makes them great for cards like this because it's not too distracting. It's not like perfectly mirror shine. And so it's great as a little backdrop embellishment. Now the frames on this one are from the Altenew Geometric Frames die set, which I've used before also. I did white for the frame and vellum in the inside. And then finally for that little sentiment strip, I used the Altenew Flower Vine stamp set. Use that many times in videos for those tiny little sentiments to go under the main die cuts. Okay, let's do this next design, one that I end up making a lot of at the end of this video. But first I wanted to step up that soft background. Here I have the Altenew Detailed Blending Brushes. I will be honest, I was hesitant about these at first as I've never had much luck with mini blending tools. So you can see here that it's an angled tip, very tight, it's like a mini, mini blending brush. Really nicely done. I wasn't sure if it would work well, as I said, because I've always struggled with tight, tiny inking tools like this, but I was pleasantly surprised. Let me show you how you can apply ink to just a little area and it's very smooth. There are these three brushes in the uh, one pack. So there's a small, medium and a large. I'm using the small here, so I'm really testing it out. And I found that if you use it like you do a blending brush where you rub the ink off first on your glass mat and then bring it to the paper and build up the pressure, look at that. You can get a nice little cloud of color without any lines. So I was pretty pleased with these. I'm really excited to try them with stencils and I'll do that in a future video. But what I'm doing here is adding a bit of blue color to the center of my flowers and you'll see it worked really well. I don't have any harsh lines and I get a nice soft blended look. You can use these with whatever inks. I'm using them with the Altenew inks. I will be testing these out more and using them more in future videos so you can get a better idea of how they work but I will say I was pleasantly surprised to see that they blend so nicely. So this is another way you can step up your backgrounds by inking just parts of your background. So this one has the white pigment ink in the background because we use the brayer and the folder. And now we're putting a little bit of darker blue at the center of each of the flowers. I'm keeping this card design very simple and using one of the large dies from the Altenew Just Leaves die set. Use this one many times, and that large leaf I love at the center of a card. I will also use a sentiment from the Altenew Essential Sentiment Strip die sets. This set has Hang In There, Proud Of You, Happy Anniversary, Happy Birthday, Just Because, So Grateful, um, Here For You, and You're So Kind. Lots of sentiments in there. So here's the card that I put together. I have my leaf die cut in the back. I did blue glitter cardstock with two white die cuts behind that. So it kind of stands up on our background. I then did the Just Because from white cardstock and I put some dark blue cardstock behind it to show through the letter openings. I also added a few white pearls scattered here and there. I ended up liking this design and doing more of them in the end of this video because it isn't hard to do. I just die cut my sentiments, die cut my leaves, glue them together and add them to the card. I also think it helps to use a specialty cardstock like the glitter cardstock just to add a little interest. Now in all of my examples so far, I added die cuts onto our background, but I wanted to mention you can also add stamped images as I did on this card and I'll do on my next one. For this one, I used a really cool new stamp set from Altenew called Fairy Tale Florals. There's a large six by eight stamp set and there are coordinating dies and stencils available. 
The stencils allow you to apply color into the openings of the flower, although I don't use those stencils today. What's unique about this set is that it is a really easy to do layering set. But instead of like filling in the flowers, the layers actually put little um, detail marks. It almost looks like you doodled in it. See how that looks? I thought that would be really fun and not too distracting from our inked background that we created. So I did the basic stamping. What I did is gold heat embossing for the outline of the flower. And then I did pink and green and yellow inks for the details that the layering stamps offer. So you can see that in the stamped image there. I then added a hello die cut and a little sentiment strip. I did this up in the top corner and trimmed off the excess so that I could be sure that a lot of my background that we did with the embossing folder would show. That's one of the nice things about using a light colored cardstock and white pigment ink with your embossing folder. It's pretty subtle, so you can add pretty much anything you want on top. Here I have one more example where I added a stamped image on top of one of our embossing folder backgrounds. For this, I used the new all to new book engraving stamp set. Now this stamp set is a really easy one to layer and look at the beautiful results that you can get. These are ones that you can use with or without the stamp set or the coordinating dies or the coordinating stencils. I like that Altenu offers all the pieces and you can mix and match as you want. So I did basic stamping with it. I stamped the outline with black ink and used soft pink and green inks for the layers on the inside. I then added the Just Because sentiment strip that I showed you earlier. And I put a die cut frame around our embossing folder background. So I kept the backgrounds nice and soft so that the stamping would be at the focal point, but I still allowed a lot of the background to show. So with this idea and the last one, you could make a bunch of embossing folder backgrounds and then add any stamp die cuts you want on top. It's a great opportunity to mix and match different products you have. All right, I have another design for you. This is a variation of the oval frame from earlier, but this time I used an embossing folder on the frame too. This is the Altenew Storybook Frame 3D Embossing Folder. You can see it just does a frame, which can be great on the front of a note card. But in this case, I teamed it up with the oval frame that I made with the oval dies that I showed you earlier. So I'm just lining it up with the pattern in the embossing folder, putting tape on it, and then running it through my die cut machine as we did before. This time, I'm not applying any ink to it. I'm just using the embossing folder to add some texture to the simple frame. And look at that beautiful detail. It would be great for a wedding or anniversary card. So I kept mine simple. I used one of our embossing folder backgrounds where I just put the white pigment ink on top. And I have that in the center of the frame. I added it to a blue note card and then added a thanks layer die cut there at the center. I had die cut thanks twice from white cardstock and glued it together. Then once from glitter cardstock and then glued that on top but slightly offset. I then added a sentiment strip underneath and a few pearls. I wanted to keep this card very soft just to keep a focus on that texture in the background. And by the way, the sentiment strip is from the Altenew Tranquility Rose stamp set, which I end up using quite a bit at the end of this video. Here's yet another idea for you for using your embossing folders, but instead of as a background, I cut elements out of the embossing folder background. So here's one that we inked with the white pigment ink in the background. Instead of keeping it solid, I'm cutting some of the leaves out of the pattern and I'll use those on a card. So think about any large elements that you have on embossing folders. You can always cut them out and use those, them as focal points or accents. Here I just added it onto a white note card. You can see the three leaves I cut out. And then I also tucked in a few gold glitter leaves that I had in my leftover die cut drawer. I then added a gold glitter hello die cut and a sentiment strip. And you can see there's a lot of texture on here thanks to the embossing folder and the glitter paper that we used. So don't feel like you have to use an entire background. Or maybe you do a background with an inking technique and you don't like it all cut out the parts that you do like. Okay, now I have a bunch of additional examples that are like the ones I've already done. And I wanted to show them to you because I'd made little changes that made a lot of impact.
So these are the four that I've made so far that I thought I might want to make more of, but I really boiled it down to two, the one on the left, and then the oval there with the light blue in the center. So inspired by the oval design, I made these three cards. And you can see I have the three embossing folder textured backgrounds right at the center. I did the white frame with the embossing folder detail on it. And then I just added a simple die cut sentiment. And on some of them, I added a little sentiment strip. Here I wanted a lot of that yellow to show, so I only added the gold die cut. Here I added the additional sentiment strip. But notice how the colorful background is the focal point, and these cards came together pretty quickly. I also still have scraps from the backgrounds that I cut off that I can save for a future card. Here, I think this one's probably my favorite. I used a soft peach glitter cardstock for the thanks. I like that it kind of blends in and really allows the background to show. So with all of my remaining embossing folder backgrounds, I wanted to use the full piece so that it would cover the entire background of the card. So I thought the best card design would be the one where I have the leaf and the die cut sentiment at the center. So I die cut for this one, two white leaf die cuts and glued them together, and then a black glitter die cut, and I put that on top of that, but slightly offset so some of the white would show. I love the look of that black glitter cardstock there. I'll have another example showing that in a bit. But I really liked the black on the brown background, and then I teamed it up with a pink envelope. I thought that contrast would be fun. Now on this one, I have the green background where we did the white pigment ink and some perfect pearl on it. And so I thought I'd go with a teal glitter die cut there at the center. I then added the So Grateful Sentiment Strip. Remember that is from the Essential Sentiment Strip die set. I use mostly just because So Grateful and You Are So Kind because those are the themes that I needed. Here we have one of our white pigment ink backgrounds with the embossing folder. I love that embossing folder. And I decided to do a gold glitter die cut on this. Now again, I stack up my die cuts. The reason I do that is the dimension really makes them stand out, but if you don't want as much bulk, you definitely could just do single layer die cuts. Now on this one, I had the perfect pearl shine on the background, so I thought it'd be fun to use holographic cardstock on the leaf. I just thought all that shine would tie together nicely. And notice that on all of these cards, it's a pretty simple design, right? But that leaf die cut, I use some sort of specialty cardstock on each of the leaves on each of the cards. The reason is it adds a lot of interest to a simple design. Here I used a really light pool color glitter cardstock. So dig through your specialty cardstocks are always good to use on basic die cuts on interesting backgrounds like these. I really like that this particular embossing folder seems to have different dimensions of leaves in the background. So much fun. Now here we have one of the leaf backgrounds where I used that glimmer ink pad. Remember the enchanted gold ink pad? So there's a little bit of gold on the background. So I decided to use a glitter gold die cut at the center. And last but not least, we have this fun bold card. I felt like a lot of my cards from earlier in this video were more classic or elegant. I wanted something bold and fun. So here we have the bright peach background with the white pigment ink rubbed on top. Then we have the stacked white die cuts with the black glitter die cut kind of offset. And I just thought that was a fun way to change up the look of this card, but it's the same design we've done on all the others. So be sure to experiment with different colors and things you normally wouldn't do. All right, there you have it, a bunch of card examples. I'm hoping that by doing so many examples, you find something that appeals to you and also see that these techniques can be used with a variety of products and likely something that you already have. If you are interested in the products I do talk about, they are linked in my YouTube description. I also have here in the center some links to other embossing folder videos that I've done that I think you might like. Thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful, let YouTube know by giving it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for spending the time with me. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.